Tracy, welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, welcome back if you watch my videos. And if you do, I thank you so, so much. I love to upcycle clothes and turn ordinary thrifted items into beautiful artsy pieces of clothing, one of a kind that you can sell or wear yourself. I sold for many, many years. I sold mostly on eBay, a little bit on Etsy. And then before that, I had vendor spaces. Um, today we're working on a dress and it's kind of a theme here because it's starting with a nightgown and I'm also using bedding. I have an old duvet cover and some bed skirts, you know, the bed ruffles, they have like the pretty designs around the bottom. Now this seems like a lot, but it's all thrifted and these are tons of fabric, you know, the duvet covers and the bed skirts and they're unique and this one has lace on it and each one of these i think in my goodwill they're like 4.99 or 5.99 a piece and they're giant could you imagine going to the fabric store and buying this much fabric let alone you can't even find it this cute in the fabric store so this dress really is at minimal cost and i have a string here i played with um if you sell, I just want to say this dress, I would call, you know, so like when you do your titles and headings, I would call it a Mori girl, a legging look, a bohemian boho, or a prairie dress. So those are just some great hashtags or keywords to put in your title. Let's get started on it. Okay, so here's the nightgown. And keep in mind, I know a lot of women tell me they don't like sleeveless, but find a nightgown with arms. You know, you can do like a cute, messy, rolled up cuff on the arm, or you can add some lace or a ruffle at the bottom. Be just as cute. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut this off. I want sort of an empire waist, which is kind of high. And so... I have these buttons here. I am going to cut about half an inch below where that whole button piece stops. Just going to cut that off. Okay, in order to cut this off, I just laid my yardstick down underneath of these buttons. And then I measured seven inches down from the armpit on each side just to make sure I knew that I had it even. And then I just took a marker and I made little dashes just so I know where to cut. And then I'll cut above that black marker line so that it doesn't show on the finished dress. Okay, so I have this cut off. And the next thing I want to do is before I add all this fabric, I want to do what I need to do to the top part. And what I will do is I have this sort of um, table scarf or small tablecloth lace and it has this ruffle and I'm going to cut that ruffle off probably right above the line here and I will just cut that off all the way around and then I'll show you what I'll do. Okay so I have my lace piece all cut and this side is sort of finished and this side is raw where I cut. I'm going to lay the raw side down closest to where I'm going to sew here. I want to sew this along the buttons. This has a cute little ruffle. I want to go underneath that ruffle because I want to save it. I'll go around the back, over the shoulder and back down the front. And so I'll go to my machine and I will stick this, line it up with the bottom of the top, and I will just make little pinch pleats. I hope you can see that. It's white on white. It's always hard to see. But every couple of inches or inch and a half, I will fold it over about half an inch. And I would never measure this. It would take forever. But as I'm sewing, the needle's coming through here. I fold over and go over it. Fold over it, sew over it. Fold it over about half an inch, sew. And just keep doing that all the way around. 
and I will come in about half an inch because I want a little bit of ruffle to be seen on the inside also. And I will use white thread. And a lot of times with lace, I do a zigzag stitch, but with this, I'll just do a fairly small straight stitch. I'll use a zigzag a lot of times when the lace is, has like real big gappy holes, but this one's pretty fine. It should be okay to use a straight stitch. Okay, so here's what the lace looks like sewn on. Wouldn't this be a really cute crop top? If you, <laughs> if you like crop tops, add a little lace at the bottom. Anyway, we're making a dress. Okay, so now what I want to do is add a piece of fabric all the way around, sort of long, so that I can add my ruffles and layers to it. I would say layers, not ruffles. And it will be pleated all the way around. Now, if you've ever made a dress like this, you know that they can get somewhat heavy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to this bed skirt. This is one of two bed skirts. This is what the decorative part looks like. But then the center is sort of this really thin, gauzy, it's double layered right now so it doesn't look so thin, but let's see. It's fairly sheer and lightweight, which I love because there'll be quite a bit of it. And I am going to cut this. I'll cut the ruffles off and I will just cut the ruffle off about half an inch into this little gauzy fabric all the way around. And then I have this to work with. And I will cut a piece 26 inches, <laughs> 26 inches long and I'm not sure how long it'll be. Should I say 26 inches wide? Because <laughs> it'll be long, and I'll let you know how long it will be, but it will definitely be 26 inches from here to here, and um, I'll let you know what that measurement comes out to be. Okay, so I have a lot of cutting to do, and I'm going to use my electric scissors. I'll put the link in my description. I have tendonitis, and when I have like a massive amount of cutting to do or a lot of repetitive cutting or heavy cutting, I go to my scissors here, my electric scissors. Okay, so I have this sheer piece all cut and I have it folded over so it's doubled right now, but it ended up being about 73 inches in length in total. And then of course I have it 26 inches this way. And now we just need to sew it onto the top and I'll show you what I do. Okay, in order to sew this on, I will do, this isn't too much wider than the top. It's a little bit wider. It definitely needs to be somewhat wider so that we have some pleating and some fullness. But I will go to the side seam of the top and I will just sew on the outside here, I will lay my sheer fabric. Oh gosh, let me find the end, okay. <laughs> I will just lay it about half an inch over top of the bottom of the shirt, but I won't start sewing at the very edge. I will start sewing about two inches in. That way when we're all finished, we want to close this up. We have something to stitch to, but I'll show you how I do that. But just remember to start two inches in, start at a side seam, and just put it in your machine. Your needle goes along. Now this one I'll only pinch pleat probably about every three inches, maybe fold it over half an inch. You know, I don't do a lot of measuring. I just kind of figured out, and if I run out, I actually have another chunk from that bed skirt I can add on to it. I prefer not to do that. That's a lot of extra work, but I think this will work. Go every three inches, about half an inch. 
and I'll just pleat it all the way around. And I'll show you what I do when I get to the end to close it up. Because when you get to the end, you want to do the same thing. You want to leave two inches open and don't sew all the way to the edge. Okay, I have it all sewn. And by some miracle, I had like the perfect amount of fabric for this. Sometimes I don't know how that even works out, but it does. Okay, so I wanna show you how to end it. I don't want a gap right here. I want this sewn shut. So I have that two inches where I started, and then I have about three inches over here. It doesn't really matter. And I will go back to my machine, and I will line these edges up, and I will just sew along the edge. And I'll use a small single or straight stitch on this, but I did zigzag this on, and I forgot to mention that to you before I started. Just because this is gauzy and kind of fragile, I like to zigzag stitch to make it more durable. Okay, so once you have the side seam all sewn, go back up into your dress with your machine and just make a little pleat and zigzag stitch that shut. And I'm going to refer to this as the end seam because I may have to do this again throughout making the dress, I'm not sure yet. So I'll just be like, remember how we did the end seam where we stitched it together on the side, went back in and closed it up. Okay, so I have the side all closed up and this is what it's looking like. And what I want to do now is add a ruffle at the bottom because for me, it's easier to start with the layers at the bottom and work my way up. That way you're not fighting ruffles and moving them out of the way when you try to sew under them. It's just easier. So what I did was I tried this on and I wanted to be full length all the way to the floor, or almost to the floor. And I will wear like a flat shoe or a cowboy boot or something with this probably. So I just measured flat footed, but if you plan on wearing heels or something like that, try it on with your heels. And what I did was I measured from the bottom of this to the floor to get how much ruffle I want. And I, what I want is 13 inches. Well, it just so happens that my dust ruffle that we cut for this is 13 inches. So I kind of lucked out there. <laughs> but if it hadn't been 13 inches and I needed it longer, I probably would have gone to my duvet cover and cut the size that I need, but this just worked out really nice. And I'll show you how I add it to the bottom. Okay, so here's my dust ruffle. And if you're familiar with dust ruffles, in the corners, they're split like that. And I'm just gonna leave that. I don't care down at the bottom if, you know, there's a little opening when you walk. So what I will do is I'll just show you here. Um, I'll start at a side seam and I will just start sewing this over top of the dress at the bottom and I will pinch pleat it. And I can be fairly generous with this because I have a ton, this is really long. And so I will probably go about every couple inches and maybe fold it over an inch. The more you fold it over, the more voluminous the ruffle is going to be. And so I'll just go to my machine, put it over top of the dress, about half an inch, start at a side seam, and I'm not going to seam this together at the end. I will just overlap it when I'm all done, about four inches. So when I'm at the very end of the dress, I'll just overlap it about four inches. and. I'll stick the needle in and just pinch pleat it all the way along the bottom of the dress until I'm finished. Okay, so here's what it looks like from a distance. But I'm going to give you a close up so that you can get a better idea of how I did that. Okay, so see I just went right over the top of the dress 
And this is where I cut the center of the bed skirt out. And I just left those. I like a little bit of frame. And over here on the side is where I ended. And I just overlapped that like four inches, cut it off. And I didn't even finish this. You can hem that if you want or do a zigzag stitch, but I do not mind frame personally. So on to the next layer. By the way, the dust ruffle that I used on the bottom is from a full size bed. And I had this much left over. So a twin might work, a twin size dust ruffle. So the next ruffle I'm going to do is going to be 20 inches wide. And I am going to use, excuse the movement of the camera here. It was sitting on my duvet cover. I'm using this duvet cover and it has really pretty designs a little higher up and that's why I want to do this one the long one plus we have an off-white I want to do a white and then off-white again and then the top is white so it kind of balances out so what I'm going to do and I think this is like a queen size duvet cover I am just going to cut 20 inches off one side and see what length I get and I'll let you know. Okay, so I have this all cut out. It's 20 inches tall and it ended up being 80 inches long. That may or may not be enough. This piece won't have a ton of pleating, but I still have more I can cut if I need to add to it, but I'm gonna just try to get away with the 80 inches. And so what I want to do is here is where we sewed the other ruffle on. I want to make sure that this covers that seam. And so I think it's about three or four inches overlapping this piece. So I'm just kind of laying it out and looking at it. And what I'll do is once I have it right here, figured out how long I want it to go over this ruffle, I will measure from this waistline that we originally sewed down to where this starts. And I get about seven inches. So I'm gonna go about seven and a half inches will be my number. And I will take my ruler and you can use a straight pin. I am going to just use a really thin marker and I am going to mark seven and a half inches. And I'm going to go all around that waistline and mark seven and a half inches down. That way I know when I'm at my machine right where to stitch that. And we won't have a wonky kind of weird <laughs> shape going around our dress. And when I sew this on, I'll, Start at a side seam again, and I am just going to overlap this also when I get to the end. I'm not going to sew it together like I did that original ruffle or that original um, gauzy piece. So I'll just start at a side seam up where I made those dashes, and I'll just sew all the way around. Now, this one will have a smaller pleat probably about half an inch every three inches I would say. I don't want it to be as full as that bottom ruffle that we have. I want it to taper up and get less and less sort of an A-frame. So I won't put a lot of pleating in this. Um, just real subtle all the way around. If I need more I'll have to cut more off of my duvet. And I'll use a single or a straight stitch, a fairly small straight stitch on this. I'm at my machine ready to sew on that duvet. And I just wanted to tell you how I'm going to do this is I still have my front plate removed and I unbuttoned the top and I'm going to slide it in from the top just because those marks that I made are closest to the top. And that way I'm not 
if I slid the bottom in first, I'll have a ton of fabric bunched up over here and I'd be fighting that. So I'm just going to slide it in from the top and go to a side seam. Find one of my marks. Find my ruffle over here. And I will just lay it down and just start stitching over it. And then when I get to this, when I get all the way around and to the end, I'll just overlap it about four inches. Okay, so here's what we have so far. I did end up cutting another piece for this. Um, 20 by 40 inches. And now I want to add one more large ruffle right at that waistline where we originally sewed that thin gauzy fabric. And so I have this dust ruffle and this is a twin and it has kind of a lace. It's sort of this off-white acre color. And I will just cut this off probably right above the seam because I kind of want to see that seam. I like things with raw edges and detail like that. And so I'll just cut off probably all of this and come back and give you a little more detail about how I sew that. Okay, I have my dust ruffle all cut. And... I will start at a side seam again, and I'll give you a closer up of how much I'll pleat this one, but basically, just like all the others, start at the side seam. I'm going to sew it completely to the edge because I will just overlap it at the end. So I'll pleat, go all the way around, and I'm going to go right on top of that seam that's already there. Now this one, I... I don't want it huge and voluminous because it's at the top. So probably about every three or four inches, I will just pleat it about half an inch all the way around. Okay, so here's what we have so far. Very legging look. Um, the next thing, last thing I'm going to do is I have a lot of lace left. I have a lot of this bed skirt left that uh, we did right here. And I am just going to cut off the lace from the bottom of it. And I am just going to sew it right along. I'll take the middle of the lace and I'll put it right on that seam. And I'll sew the top of the lace and the bottom of the lace to just really clean this up and smooth this out right here. Okay, I have the lace all sewn on. Now I'm going to put it on and show it to you again.